Now, everyone, welcome to the Box Social Gaming Podcast. I'm Shane Goen, and I'm joined by the beautiful Caleb Dodge. Oh, you dog, you. On this lovely Saturday morning, February 14th. Uh, we talk about video games in this podcast, and we've been playing some. Namely, you just picked up a Wii U. Yep. I bought a console for the first time in forever. I think the last console I bought was a PS3. So I'm starting out this generation. Uh, see, when did I pick up my PS3? Back when I had money. So <laughs> I think around <laughs> 2007, 2008, I picked it up. Oh, you picked up, up what, like way earlier than I did. I was knee deep in Xbox 360 for the start of that gen. Oh, yeah, me too. I, I didn't pick up the PS3 till late in its life cycle. Well, midway through its life cycle. And then eventually picked it up played like five games for it and then sold it man yeah i I got mine in 2010 i want to say so i picked it up like uh with uh god war 3 uncharted 1 2 like demon souls it was it was a really good year to uh to jump into the playstation 3 yeah i basically i did the same thing i went and i picked up actually the god of war uh, collection of one and two because i never played them before because my PS1, too, I mean, it was like one of the older ones that you couldn't play God of War on unless you like cracked it open and moved a little white, like the position of the laser. And then that was like 50 50 chance that it was going to work. So I finally got to play those two. Then I bought three. Then I game uh Uncharted 1, too. But as I was getting to the finale of Uncharted 1, the game had a scratch in it and it would just fuck up and not let me play it, like the finale. So I said, fuck it. <laughs> went out and got the second game and i was like i'll figure out what happens played the second game so i haven't played the third but i should do that sometime yeah yeah it'll probably be re-released on playstation 4 at some point in time yeah i I sense a collection in the future isn't that the fucking trend of the of the this generation hey we had a pretty good games last generation let's uh let's let's just throw them up there we'll see we did a lot of texture work for them even though these are just what it looked like on pc at the time you know what ifs what ifs yeah i mean you know if they work on like the master chief collection i'd be down for it like so long as it's a decent repackage then i'm okay and if it like all pulls from the same multiplayer interface like if i was able to play uncharted 2 and 3 with all the multiplayer maps uh and all the dlc kind of like already on disc i think that'd be a pretty sweet deal same then, thing with like gears of war or something and then the multiplayer fucking working when it launches too right yeah oh I'm that mad. won't happen uh, I just I feel bad for that whole situation. I re- I did want that to actually work really well, but then when the, I heard that the multiplayer fucked up, I'm like, that is your one chance, Xbox. Well, I guess they have I another mean, chance. Like I'm prior I'm on to record. releasing it, I didn't think there was going to be a chance that it would be fucked up. I mean, those games were already built; they've been running online for years. There really hasn't been a problematic Halo multiplayer launch, so. Like that came out of left field. Like I, I had no idea that the game would be anywhere near that broken. And the fact that it's probably the most fucked up product that I've picked up in, in last year, um, and, and we probably both the most fucked up product on the market. Four. Yeah, no, uh, Master Chief Collection is significantly worse uh, in my experience than Battlefield Four was. I played the PC version of that, so I ducked the console stuff. But going off of what people said about the console versions, I think Master Chief Collection is still more fucked up. <laughs> uh, that's man. halo i know how do you how do you fuck that up but i guess they were doing like the whole system where they were like you go into each version of like the game to go play that multiplayer around shit like that I, it, it takes a lot of work and it's new i haven't seen anything do that before so my hat's off i'm still impressed with what 343 did and how they handled the situation they handled I it like sports not. to an extent i mean it took I, fucking forever though i mean all the coding's already there it's, you know, th- those games had multiplayer hooks. They were running on servers before. You know, the fact that they're all launching from one disc is cool, but that had a massive install, plus, like, multi-gig download after the fact. So them just running a bunch of separate executables that they have running on an emulator, specifically tailored for those four games, which would ostensibly be just an Xbox 360 emulator. I mean, I get that that yeah. could be, like, a technical challenge it's certainly not easy you can't just move anything over from xbox 360 to xbox one but still i feel like people are making excuses for 343 i think it's incompetence i think that it's a short time frame mismanagement that game is sent out to die well 
I wasn't there for it because I still don't have an Xbox. Yeah, one. I'm raw about it. <laughs> I mean, maybe like I've been on record for saying I'll probably pick one up if they you know, release Gears of War, Tril- the Marcus Phoenix trilogy. Make it happen. Make it happen. Next, next Xbox. Do it. That with dedicated servers would be awesome. That's the oh, other thing. Uh, Mass Chief Collection still not running on dedicated servers. That Pretty is cool. horseshit. That peer is peer. complete holer shit right there, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's terrible. At least Wii U. If, yeah, Wii U. No problems like that. Because fucking Wii U. What do you multiplayer with that thing? <laughs> I mean, seriously. <laughs> how, did I, how about Smash Brothers? Oh, I've actually not been online for Smash Bros. yet. I've actually played maybe like five, six matches of Smash Bros. And the, you know, I haven't gotten anything unlocked or anything because I played like five, six fucking rounds of Smash Bros. Just like the night I picked up. I just picked up like like Thursday night and we were recording Saturday. So I haven't had that much time to do things. But yeah, I actually really dislike most of the maps that I've played on the five maps I played on so far. It's it's weird, but then again, I'm finding that I'm losing myself really easily again. So I gotta I gotta train my eyes to be able to follow my character, smash eyes, yeah. as I like to call them. It takes some time. Do you have uh, a pro controller or the GameCube controller adapter? Okay, so here's the thing I'm figuring out about Wii U stuff. What the fuck are you doing, Nintendo? Why are you making this shit like collectors' items and shit like that? I mean, I went all around fucking. Madison, just both sides of town, looking for fucking a pro controller. I just wanted a pro controller. I just wanted a fucking controller because I know that the Wii U pad dies in like three hours of using it. I wanted an actual fucking controller. So I went to fucking like Best Buy. They didn't have one. Like supposedly they had like eight in stock and they didn't have them. So I'm guessing they all were stolen or misplaced (laughs) as we like to call it in the big box retail industry. Fell off the truck. Yep. <laughs> and then um, Target didn't have any there, but they still had 3D Mario Land, like Wii U editions, which is the one that I picked up. So I got an extra game on top of that. World? Yep, got World there. And that's been pretty fun. I've been playing that with my girlfriend. Nice sit down on the couch kind of thing. I like to throw her off the edge a bunch of times. It's good times. Yeah, I wish my girlfriend would play World. She's stuck with 2D Marios. If he goes 3D, oh. then she's out. It's just like, nope, 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 can't do it. I know. Wish it wasn't the case, but what are you going to do? Yeah, exactly. I mean, my my girlfriend, she she, she loves to play Sly Cooper and stuff like that back in the day. So she's kind of used to that kind of like 3D world aspect. And I guess it's, it's a bit of a leap. It was a leap for all of us to go from 2D to 3D. Sure. Makes sense. Yeah, but anyway, me bitching about controllers and collectibles with this fucking console. So I went I went to a GameStop, they didn't have it, went to a local shop, they didn't have it. Went to another GameStop, still didn't have the Pro Controller, but they had this thing called a Fight Pad, which looks kind of like a GameCube controller, but the stick placements are different. And you have two full sticks instead of like the C stick being a little nubby stick. Mm-hmm. And you can only get them in Peach theme, Mario theme, and Yoshi theme. And I was the guy was telling me that like, oh yeah, you just plug it into your Wiimote. And it works as like a normal, like a, like a GameCube controller. I'm like, okay, cool. Do you have one that's not fucking retarded and has this stupid shit on it? Like like a black or a white one? It's like, no, nah, man, we only have this Yoshi one. We don't come that way. But I'm telling you right now, Yoshi one's pretty pretty hard to come by. It's rare. I'm like, ooh, a fucking Yoshi controller. I better buy two. One to keep in the package and one to play with. Whoa. I'm just seriously. Uh, so whole... did you get one? Yeah, I got, I got it. <laughs> Took it out of the package. I think it has food stains on it already. I don't give a fuck. Cool. It just uh, how's it work for Smash Bros? It works pretty fine for Smash Bros. I've been finding my hand cramps a little bit when I'm playing the with the pad itself with the mm-hmm. screen. I don't know why. Maybe it's because yeah, I don't like the Wii U game pad for Smash Bros. Like I feel like it's kind of awkward to use it for a game like that. That the controller is actually awkward for. A lot of normal kind of action games like Bayonetta, I don't think controls particularly well using that thing. Yeah, I still have to actually pick up Bayonetta. I, like, I ended up picking up uh, four full games. One of them was uh, World, Super Mario World. And then, because I came with the console, then I got uh, Hyrule Warriors, which I've been actually having the strangest 
most amount of fun with. <laughs> Just by a myself. A lot of people really that. like that game. Yeah. Like I, I don't play too many Dynasty Warrior games. Not as much as like my buddy does. Muso. He, he loves that. We do double Muso sometimes. We get in, we get on the couch. We double Muso. Bro, tap B. It's awesome. It's a good time. We're square, circle, whatever console you play on. Mm. And um, let's see. What else did I pick up? Fuck me in a hand basket. I gotta check my notes. We're professional here. Well, with with Smash Brothers, um, so you did like oh, yeah. five or six matches, and it has it just not hooked you yet? Um, I guess not. I I don't feel really hooked. I didn't really get super in depth with Brawl either. Like I got I don't really. Think a lot of people do. I got really into melee, but I think yeah. that was more because I was like a kid, and it was like the only thing that was out at the time for a long time, like for the GameCube. <laughs> Like I had everything else, and it was like, I'm going to just fucking really get in the like, melee here. Because I played it all the time, and everybody, like, that was the main reason why they had a GameCube most of the time. Other than Super Mario Sunshine, the greatest Mario game ever made, ever. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh huh. I can't agree with that. But yeah, melee. Back in the day, I was kind of I was hooked on that, but I think it was still like at the point where that was like charming and kind of a cool concept, having those characters like all fighting each other like as i've grown older and it's like i, I continue to play nintendo games but i'm just not um i'm not in love with the, the character roster anymore and it's not um it's not super interesting to see them all together uh so it its hook has been kind of lost on me from like a conceptually and i also don't think it plays as well as melee did uh i can't quite put my finger on it. I know Melee's faster, it's snappier. Um I also thought like the campaign modes in, in Melee, whatever the fuck it was called, was a lot more fun and more varied. And I think Brawl had a pretty good campaign mode with like CGI and that sort of shit. And that's completely missing from this one. So it's like on the single player aspect that's fine. I'm just not into that uh Smash Brothers fighting community. I think those people are kinda weird. Uh they get very competitive items off, you know, final destination style stages and, you know, cool. If that works for them, that's great. I, I can respect technically that those guys are really good. Like the, the professional melee players, that sort of thing. Same professional in quotation marks, but it's not a it's game that Evo, I would want to be competitive with. Yeah. It's, great. it's an Evo game, man. So it's professional, man. Seriously. Man. Sure. Don't, don't fuck know. with the smash players. I we saw the Smash Bros, the, the that documentary about it. So it's like, you know, I don't... I get that there's a high skill ceiling, but out of games that I don't watch competitively, that would be very, very low on the list. Uh, so, like, I own Smash Brothers uh, for Wii U uh, digitally, and it's currently uninstalled on my hard drive. Like, I'm... At some point in time, we'll go back and revisit it and put some major time in, but for, like, the five or six hours I played it, it didn't do anything for me. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I haven't gotten too much into it. I've been enjoying Hyrule Warriors a lot. I mean, I also picked up Zombie U, but I don't feel like I should be able to talk about that because I made it out of the subway, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to go save now and play something else because I'm sleepy, and this is kind of a slow-moving game. I don't want to play this while I'm sleeping. Dude, it's got kind of a, a, a Dark souls kind of pace to it. I, I wound up liking that game. I haven't finished it, but I wound up liking that game a lot more than I thought I would. Yeah, that's that's what a lot of people's senses on that game. Like even when I was picking it up from the from GameStop, I picked it up used. Sorry, Ubisoft, I didn't give you my money all the way, you know, firsthand. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, like the person who was selling it to me was like, "Yeah, this is actually pretty popular," and I've seen let's plays of it, and I'm like, that, "This looks cool," and I enjoy the fact that it it tries to be like somewhat traditional in its survival horror sense where um, mm -hmm. you have one button you have to press to like prep the weapon and another press button to shoot. Yeah. And I've been playing a lot of Resident Evil lately, so... Oh, this yeah. fits right in. Fits right in. I mean, fuck, last time I played, I think I wasted about an hour trying to find a fucking key. Like, I didn't want to go out and do the part with the dog whistle. I'm like, oh, there's got to be something else before I go fight those damn dogs. I'm, I was like armed to the teeth too. Like I could take care of him. Like I just don't wanna. And I ended up just running around the mansion for like an hour until I found this found the the, the fake key was on the dog. And I was like, shit, this is what I've been looking for this whole time. I didn't want to go out there because I didn't remember that the fake key was on it. I thought a full key was on it. 
It's like, well, I want to get this key first before I get that key. And then, yeah, that happened. And I'm an idiot. And <laughs> that's been my life. But I now have the grenade launcher, too. So that's fun. Yeah, I think that segueing from like classic Resident Evil into Zombie U is would be really cool. Cause, I mean, like v- very different playing games, but uh, in a way uh, kind of very classic style survival horror. I mean, Zombie U nece- really isn't. It's kind of like an odd mixture of like a Resident Evil cross with a Daisy. But I mean, y- you play both of those games, so yeah. It's kind of a cool combination, and I think that's a game that's been like just criminally overlooked. I think people kind of played it for the first couple of hours, and it definitely does have like its its own pace and its. Uh... But I think that kind of adds like a nerve wracking kind of aspect to it. But I, I haven't finished it, so I mean, I, I like the game, but it it's not like a phenomenal game like a, a Dark Souls or something like that to where it just totally gripped me. But it was it's cool, especially for like fifteen bucks. Yeah, I mean, it was damn cheap when I picked it up. And I'm planning to go back on playing it. But right now, I think I'm going to focus a little more on Hyper Warriors and get through that. So this, maybe get to like the DLC stuff. Because I hear the DLC is actually fucking worth it. For like seven bucks, you get a shit ton of bonus missions. And you get a lot of like new weapons and character skins and stuff like that. And there's two packs right now. So yeah. I, One I of them is a tingle pack. Oh, yeah. Well, that's that Tingle's part of the Majora's Mask back, as I was reading. And I was like, how does that work? Because he's a giant bitch. I mean, it would be cool if um if you didn't have a map, like, at all, and if one of your, like, special abilities is that you could just float up to the top of the world, and then suddenly your map draws out. I thought that, I thought that would be a quirky thing, but I don't know if it does that. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. Probably but... not. <laughs> yeah, Probably I mean... not. I really want to play that game. Fuck, I just... I think it's a really cool take on the Legend of Zelda series as a whole, too. Like, in the beginning of the game, um, the the princess and uh, her bodyguard, I can't remember the name of right now. God, this is this is a bad day. I can't remember Impa. names. Yeah, Impa. Or, like, we gotta find, we gotta find the, the hero. And then um, they're checking all the new guards and warriors and stuff like that. And Impa's just like, we're not going to find him here. We never find him here. We should probably go to the fucking woods. But nope, Link's there. He's training to be a soldier. He's kind of like uh, like Luke Skywalker, kind of. If he actually went to go try to join the Imperial Army instead of just talking about it. But, yeah. Well, it... <clears throat> wasn't Luke going to join the Rebellion, though? Wedge, <laughs> man. Wedge and Tilly was going off to, to join the, join the no, Rebellion. I, I thought yeah. he was going to go join the... Uh, the, the... I didn't like the ch- Empire. No. I'm going to go get up. power converter to Tashi Station. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Fuck. Man, I should watch some Star Wars. <laughs> it's been a long time since I watched the original trilogy of Star Wars. Which one's your favorite? Uh, Empire Strikes Back, by far. Empire Strikes Back? Best that's, one. That's, so is Don, Dante Hicks says that's his favorite, too. I mean, I just think, like, as a movie, I think that game's the game. Ha. That movie is a phenomenal movie. I think it's one it of the best uh, sci-fi movies ever made and probably one of the, the best American movies, like in, probably up in the top 20, 30 for me. And anybody who's just like, man, I love that ending. It's such a downer. It's just like, fuck you. Everything else about that movie is just awesome. Well, it's a good middle like, point. Yeah, especially they're just telling a story and it works as a sequel. I mean, the third movie is kind of Return of the Jedi is like, eh. Yeah, it's kinda... like half really good and half really shitty. I think it's when Lucas was starting to lose his mind. Yeah. And it's just like, I gotta make this for the children, because children equal money. <laughs> yeah, like the Ewok portion, I mean, just horrible. Yeah, uh, but I mean, it's Ewoks. still got some awesome scenes, like the swoop bike chase is fantastic. I think uh, the finale with Palpatine was a lot of fun. Vader got some good characterization in Return of the Jedi, but yeah, they yeah. and I mean like the opening with like Jabba is pretty classic. It's like then it segues into Ewoks. I mean, you it got loses that its way. Sweet, sweet steel bikini. Ooh. Yeah. 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 Hyrule Warriors. Hyrule Warriors. It's a fun game. But no, let's talk more about movies. <laughs> uh <laughs> Ah, uh, no. Nah. Nah, I was... I, I watched is... The Guest the other day. That was fun. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no cool. idea what that's about. I uh, guess this is movie to where this um, guy returns from Iraq or Afghanistan to go to his buddy's family's house. Um, his buddy died in the war. So he okay. passes on his final words to his family. Like, you know, he wanted me to tell you that he loves you and all that shit. Um, so they invite him to stay over. Like, you know, they're kind of taken aback by how sweet this guy is. And it turns out that uh, he is not what he seems to be. And kind of is like an agent of uh, chaos upon this town. And it, I don't know, I had a lot of fun with it. It's not like I art or anything, but it was a super fun movie. So yeah, movies. Just, yeah, movies. This, he sounds kind of like fucking Ganondorf from High Reward. No. Yeah, uh, just like... Just like it. Mountain Abbey. Just like Ganondorf. <laughs> this is going to be the episode of just like, we try to transition the shit, and, but we don't know where we're going. And we're just like, eh, let's just we talk about it. We don't need a transition. It's fine. Let me just smash cut into it. I mean, what, what, do you, what do you have for breakfast? That's some nice I had pancakes. A, I had a breakfast bar. I thought about fixing something, and I wound up not fixing anything. Oh, you decided yeah. to come do this with me. And you're like, oh, fuck yeah, I had you, some Cossack. coffee. I had some of that, like uh, Trader Joe's, like French vanilla. So I fixed that this morning. Ooh. Played some Evolve. Um, but I mean, we can get into Evolve later. Like, right, I really, like, really, I do want to talk about Hyrule Warriors because I think that I, I haven't played Dynasty Warriors since Dynasty Warriors, like, two uh, early in the PS2 days. And that was okay. a rental at the time. But I, I was young. So, I mean, that would have been, what, 2000 and one right mm -hmm. about yeah okay so it's 12 uh that at the time i really enjoyed it and i haven't played a moose owl game since then so i think for me like going into hyrule warriors it'd be really fresh and there's no reason like i haven't been avoiding dynasty warriors games they've just never like interested me enough to where it's if i'm sitting there at like a, a rack of games and it's like that's something i'm gonna pick out and it's not like a critical darling or anything like if there if there's a consensus that a game's pretty fantastic, then I'll usually pick it up. It doesn't matter what it is. Uh, mm -hmm. But Hyrule Warriors, I I kind of want to get back into a Musou game, and especially since it's got like the the fan service aspect for a Zelda fan like myself, I think that would be that's enough of a hook. Plus, the people that like it said it's got an incredible amount of content. Like you said, the DLC is supposed to be great, and it adds quite a bit to the experience. There's like two packs with a third on the way. Yep. Yeah, and, so I mean, I'll probably I'll probably jump on that next month, especially if you're digging it. How, yeah, how much have you I'm, played it? I have played probably three, maybe yeah, three missions so far in the game. So like the story, the story, I have a story mode, and I like you know, there's a story mode. I just like to repeat myself on that. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so they have a main story mode thing where would you um, say it's a story mode? It is a story mode if I tell you that much. Okay. And um, they have a couple different modes. They have an adventure mode, which is where you it's a throwback kind of thing where it's like the original Legend of Zelda, like first NES game. And you got these blocks, but you have to like battle in these blocks with different challenges and you unlock more and more of the map as you go. And it's the classic Legend of Zelda map that you're unlocking, which is pretty neat. That's pretty neat. Yeah. Um, cool interface. Yes. I'm looking at a screenshot now. Oh, cool. Look at that. <laughs> they do have this weird kind of thing where um, you can ba take at the beginning of a level, you can um, go to the bazaar shop. And one of the things you can do is you can just pay rubies to level up your characters to the max of whatever character you have at that who has who is the highest level. So say you have like like uh, Impa is like level eight and Link's like level four you could just spend rupees to get Link up to level 8 with Impa, so you're all kind of even level for the next match, for the next battle. To kind of, like, not penalize you for focusing over much on one character. Yeah. Cool. And then um, they have uh, different weapons, kind of like from uh, Dynasty Warriors 8. They have different versions of weapons, but they have, like, uh, plus rupees or, like, plus on health pickups... They give you just a little bonus for using the weapon. And mm -hmm. they'll give you different varieties of that weapon, too. Um, let's see, what else? They also have, like, a crafting system for, like, leveling, which is kind of weird. You have to pick up materials to 
make different skills for your character. So you need to pick up uh, like a couple of rags and like some other item. I can't even fucking remember what it was. But you can get a jar that's a health potion that then you can use in combat if you're running low on health. You can take a swig from a health potion. And they can, can you also... bottle fairies? I'm not sure about that. I feel like that's something you should be able to do. Um, another little nice thing was in the first battle, you have to like blow down this wall and you go to the fairy fountain. And if you go to take control of the fairy fountain, you can have the fairy um, destroy like a couple of points where the enemies are coming in and slow down their approach, which is pretty neat. Hmm. Also, it's got boobies. Yeah. yeah some of those characters are uh, very cleavage heavy. Mm-hmm. But it wouldn't Not be a Dynasty Warriors game without it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll play that probably next month. Uh, I've been meaning to pick it up for a while. So... I hear the multiplayer isn't great on it, like the the split screen lags. Yeah, that's the uh, Omega Force has never been really great at doing their co op at all. Like this one, High Rollers doesn't even have an online co op; it only has split screen, and they've always had issues trying to get their split screen to run at decent frame rates. Like so, whenever I play like seven with my buddy, because you can't fucking play eight co op. It just bogs you down to like 10 frames per second. It's fucking horrendous. So when we play seven together, seven still lags but down pretty badly, especially when you two are just like, oh, let's go over here and let's do double moose out them. And then that gives you even more moose out if you moose out together at the same time on each other's faces all over the place. All right. Huh. <laughs> <clears throat> Well, like co-op that I've been playing has been uh, Evolve. So I picked that up on uh, Tuesday. Pre-ordered like four hours in advance of release. So I was so able to get... get all that sweet, sweet DLC that they were holding back from you if you didn't pre-order? Oh, more like character locks seem like... I'm, I know it's got like a monster skin in it. I'm not sure if that entitles me to the behemoth monster that comes out at some point in time after release. But uh, it gives me a Goliath skin. And it unlocked... Um, Basically, uh, Evolve is a five-player multiplayer game. You got one person that plays a monster, and then you got four people to play uh, hunters. Each one of the hunter players picks a different class. There are three characters per class. Each one of them has their own armament and specializations. So um, you you only have one hunter of each type as you start the game. And I would assume that if, if you don't pre-order the game, then you also only have one monster. And you have to um, accomplish a set of challenges for each one of those hunters, which then unlocks the, the the next character. And then you have to play that character and do a set of challenges to unlock the third. So what the DLC did is essentially unlock the third uh, character classes for like the hunters and the monsters, just from the, the get-go, which leaves like the, the interim, the middle classes. You still have to like do some kind of challenges to, to get them, but it doesn't seem like it takes very long. It's kind of bullshit. Like I, I really dislike that, and it was something that kind of spurred me to where it's like I, I gotta pre-order this fucking thing prior to release in order to get the most out of my money. So mm-hmm. I did not like that because the grind is not, um, it's not short. Like I think from going from like the the class one hunters to the class two hunters doesn't take very long, but I feel like going from class two to class three, depending on the class, would take some time. Um, I I just think that's it's really bullshit. I mean, that but sounds I, bullshit. The game's been in the news for a while now about its bullshit DLC. So yeah. I kind of came into it thinking that I was going to dislike it. Like the alpha didn't really grab me. I had some fun while I was heavily intoxicated playing it for the first time. And then with the beta, I didn't dig it that much. Did you play the beta? No, I actually completely. This is how invested I have been in the game. I only hear about the shit news of it. And then I forget when they're doing like public betas and alphas. So I'll be like a day after the the beta, a buddy of mine will pop up online. It's like, hey, dude, did you play the Evolve beta? I didn't see you online. And I'm like, no, I was fucking like having doing things and stuff like that. What the fuck are you talking about? There was a beta. They're like, yeah, I'm like, ah, fuck. I wanted to make fun of that. Yeah, and it was... I mean, like, I think that there's just a negative error around the game. Um, but the game seems well put together. 
like uh uh friend of the show brennan has been uh playing it quite a bit i know that he's really taken by it uh it hasn't like gotten its hooks into me i have fun when i play it but it's, it's well put together i mean it's done by turtle rock they're the guys that did left for dead so it's got it's got pretty good pedigree it it feels like it had a enormous budget behind it um the game looks pretty sharp i, I don't particularly like the character designs like i think that uh so it's a lot of really generic looking sci-fi characters uh, that spout off a lot of really generic sci-fi lines that give them um, really plain middle of the road characterization before starting a match. I mean, but, it's, it's weird starting a game like you hear people laughing at it and stuff. It's like I, none of that has gotten to me yet. But like the hunter dude looks like a typical Western, I mean, not oh, Western, Southern like hunting dude. He's got a big old hook that he shoots in the things and talks like this every once in a while, if I remember yeah. correctly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're they're incredibly cliche. They're there's nothing to them. So it's like coming off of the original Left 4 Dead, I thought that had pretty good characterization. Even two, I thought was was pretty fun. Like I, I like the the cast in that. I don't particularly care for any of the cast in this game. Um, but mechanically, like that that's kind of beside the point like i mean yeah if the hunters are not like super original looking whatever i think it plays pretty well and i think that the differences between the classes are are pretty strong and it really like emphasizes teamwork in a way that um kind of reminds me of uh spies versus mercenaries with uh splinter cell mm, which is good old cool. days yeah i mean not not to that level like i thought that there was way more coordination going on uh in in those games and especially because you had like two teams coming up with stratagems while in this it's kind of like you do have the one player like the the one overpowered monster that's kind of like stomping around and doing his thing and like a skilled player can come up with like interesting kind of devious ways to attack or sneak up upon the hunters and that can be pretty Mm -hmm. cool but that dude's operating as a lone wolf so you don't quite get like the uh interesting flanks or or like on the fly tactics that you get out of something like uh spies versus mercenaries so um but yeah i have mainly been playing as hunters i think the game's uh it's got a good sense of mobility it's got a, a lot of verticality in the environments the game looks pretty nice i'm playing it on xbox 1 um i'm sure it looks nicer on playstation 4 and a hell of a lot sweeter on pc but i didn't have people there to play it with so i went for the xbox one version it's been all right it's better than i thought it would be i mean i think that it's a very solid kind of like four out of five kind of game it's not you know i haven't put in enough time to really put in like a a solid review on it but fuck man it's so uh, my question with it is that mm-hmm. you know, uh, like with you know recent Ubisoft games and stuff like that, there's just fucking like pop ups for like, hey, you should buy this DLC and shit like that. Is Evolve kind of like that with its like setup when you're getting into a match or when you're in your match? It's like, hey, buy the fucking way. You should buy our DLC because that's the stigma that I keep constantly fucking getting from that game. It's just it's no. gonna want my money more and more, and I'm like, no, I already it's not paid particularly 60. intrusive. No, it's not. It's a- yeah, and I mean they're doing some decent things not to absolve them of anything. Like I think the way that 2K has handled this is shitty. I'm sure the game is going to sell less because of it. There is a stigma associated with the game, but uh, the, I think at the start there's like a store button, but most games have like a store button. Yeah. Now it's where it's like under campaign multiplayer, you know, whatever, and they've got like a little window which would. I'm sure they're going to use, like, when the Behemoth comes out, they'll probably have, like, the window that's like, hey, Behemoth now available. Mm, shit but, like that, yeah. But that's not too bad. And and the way that they're handling the DLC is to where um, maps will be free to everybody. So you'll be paying for characters. And it doesn't segregate. So if um, a player picks the Behemoth and you don't have the Behemoth DLC, it doesn't matter. You can still fight the Behemoth. You just won't have access to that monster until you pay for it. So it's not going to like split the community up, which is decent. I think that's a, it's smart. Kind of um, like how um, League of Legends does it, where they kind of have... They, they, this game doesn't necessarily... It's going to have like rotating free characters. I don't know if they're going to have a plan like that. But you, if you want to play a certain characters, you have to pay for them. They have full access to them. 
Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you can just play with those people that have bought in those characters, and you're not really <laughs> restricted. Yeah, so it's like when you see it in game, it's not it doesn't come across as like nefarious or or anything. I mean, like you know, on the outset, it certainly is. Like it is kind of egregious what they've done with the DLC with this game. Um, because I mean, I remember back in the day that where there's shit like this, like oh man, we're gonna add one additional monster. That would be a free download for the game, a free edition. But uh, I mean, that's just kind of like how this industry is moving. That sucks, but it. It doesn't bother me as much as it would have, like, if this game had released two years ago, you know? It's kind of like, yeah. ah, kind of parkour, you know, what the fuck ever. But, it, I mean, mm -hmm. it it's a fun game. I, I don't know what kind of legs it's going to have with it. Like, I think it's engaging. There's a lot to learn with the game. Like, the, the maps are enormous, and, and learning ways to, to trap the monster, kind of getting into the, the psychology of how a monster player would move about the environment is really cool. It makes you feel like you're on a hunt. Um, and when you're hunting a really good player, it's a, it can be thrilling. Like it, it has, um, it's got its own pace to it, to where, you know, it starts off to where the monster's kind of underpowered. So you got like the four hunters, and they're just speeding after this guy, you know, and he's trying to stay away from them, trying to stay stealthy. And, you know, all of a sudden it's like if if you don't catch him in that time, he gets more and more powerful. He's leveling up if you give him the opportunity. And then all of a sudden the momentum turns and the monster's hunting you. That's pretty cool. It's a nice dynamic. Yeah. But, uh, I've played that game maybe for four or five hours. I've had some fun with it. It's better than I thought it would be. It's not phenomenal. I don't think yet. Maybe if I spend some more time with it. But it's all right. Well, that's, that's cool to hear. It's just It sounds like it's a great game. Underneath, it's just 2K decided to take a baseball bat to its kneecaps to begin with and saying, crawl now. Yeah, it's, it fucking sucks. Because, I mean, you know... I but. Again, I, I don't I don't know where the business stems from. My guess is it's all going to be on the publisher, right? Because the yeah. developers probably don't want to like chop up their game and sell it piecemeal. And Lord knows they didn't want the PR that they got. Oh god. Uh, no. But it's it's pretty well done. I think Turtle Rock's a good development studio, and I think they put out a pretty good game. I don't know if how it compares to like Left 4 Dead. Um, I haven't even played on all the multiplayer maps. I think there's like 16 maps or something in the game. Oh, wow, that's just, that's impressive for a game to even come out with 16 maps anymore, multiplayer. Yeah, it's it's a number of them. I won't. Uh, I'm not. I'm not certain it's 16. I read somewhere it was 16, or at least I think I read somewhere it was 16. But I haven't played all the maps yet. So, uh, and th there's been pretty cool variety, and they throw in like interesting weather effects. So it might be like uh, you play through the map once, and it's like sunshiny and. Uh, maybe like it's got like a hazy fog kind of rolling in, and then you can play it again, and it'll be nighttime in the middle of a thunderstorm, so it mixes it up. But mm. uh, yeah, that's that's evolved. I mean, I guess um, what else have we been playing? We played uh, the Hardline beta. How did you like that? I actually, strangely enough, enjoyed the Hardline beta a lot more than I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be like, oh, I fucking played this game before. Now it's just reskinned with different, you know, slightly changed up modes. Mm -hmm. uh, but it didn't feel like that. It felt actually somewhat kind of fresh. It felt like it should have been like, fuck, I don't know. Like it should be what Payday would be. But if the Battlefield team worked on it, if you, sure. you kind of yeah. like a way more open ended where you're not. You know, you, you have players that are playing as the cops and you have players that are playing as, you know, the bad guys, even though you don't really get a sense that the bad guys are really that fucking terrible. And then you kind of wonder... capture that meth lab, dude. That's true. But then the cops capture the meth lab, too. And you just capture it back and forth, making meth. It's mm. got to get that blue shit. Mm. It's bad! Los Poyos Hermanos. <laughs> uh but yeah, I strangely enough was really enjoying it. I mean, it's fast paced. It's stupid to a sense of how like cheesy everything kind of feels because it's, it's just really like, cars stupid. and explosions. Yeah. But it's like a good kind of way. Like, it's not like bad Michael Bay feeling. It's like enjoyable Bad Boys 2, I guess. Michael Bay. Bad Boys 2 Michael Bay, I think, is the best way to describe Hardline Beta. The hardline it's really game. stupid. Like, it's hard to uh, overstate how stupid that game is. But it's kind of... It feels kind of classic Battlefield. It's a, it's a neat take on it. I, it still hasn't checked in the kind of the expansion pack feel. Like, I think, you know, if this had been a generation or two 
uh, removed from current, like it would have been sold as an expansion pack. I, I don't think that necessarily makes it a bad game. You know, I think that it is kind of hard to shake. Like, hey, this looks and plays an awful lot like Battlefield 4. But uh, I, I kind of enjoyed it mechanically. Like, I like the fact that, you know, there's not a bunch of bulletproof vehicles. You can pretty much shoot through anything. Like, you can shoot an AK-47 in a transport chopper, bring it down. People are kind of rolling around in cars that you can shoot through the glass on. And the um, sweet, sweet bass that pumps from every vehicle you get. And even, like, the cop cars is just, like, blasting, like, rap music. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty dumb. I kind of really like that. Okay, we have to talk about the fucking the the mode where you have to drive the cars around really fast yeah. to get points, which I think is just the dumbest of all the modes that they have for that game that was in the beta. Where What do you think of it? Did you like it? I fucking thought it was stupid. I I want to hate it, but I can't hate it because it's just so dumb. Yeah, I wonder basically... how that's going to work months after release. I'm pretty sure that game mode might get abandoned immediately. Just, it'll wear off. It, it's So how you play, basically play this mode is that in the map, if they spawn different cars. You know, it's, you might have like a semi-truck or like a cop car or just like a fucking sedan or something like that. And you have to get into the car and all it says is if you're the driver, it says drive fast. And you just have to lay down on the gas whip around corners and shit like it and just not stop until like a meter fills and then you start gaining points for your team and both the cops and the robbers have to do it so i don't know what the fuck the cops are stealing cars for but they're securing them oh they're securing the cars by driving them fast and then blowing them up okay got yes. it. get that's how you secure cars i i'm sorry i don't know how the police force works obviously but yeah you that's just how it works drive around <laughs> shit Shit seems intense there. But, yeah, you just fucking just drive around in these cars. And most of the time, you you have to, like, try to steal them back. But half the time, you just blow them fuck up, wait for the car to respond, and then you grab that car. Yeah. Yeah. And and then you you can sometimes get, like, if you have people spawn on you properly, you could reenact. Like, we had a part where we stole a motorcycle. And then you were driving it, and then I was on the back with the grenade launcher. And it's like, oh my god, we gotta go off this jump and then kill the T2000 with it. It's pretty good. Yeah. Oh god. Yeah, I, like, having a mobile conquest like that is pretty cool, especially since they've kind of had that emphasis now on um, high-speed, low-armor vehicles. Which is kind of a cool change. Like, it makes the matches feel a lot faster. Like, getting from point A to B is quicker, and the maps aren't as large as they are in Battlefield 4. You're not really, like... There's grenade launchers that, that take out cars. So there there are explosives in the match, but there isn't as much of a prevalence. Like, um, Maybe uh, we just didn't get to the point, but I didn't see like a whole bunch of C4. Like Battlefield 4, you, C4 is really prevalent to where yeah. um, you know, you're either running from vehicles or you got like that weird kind of like uh, commando style, I'm, I'm charging this vehicle just to take it out with C4 or whatever. That, that kind of got weird. Like Battlefield 4's balance with that is... Not super great, I don't think. Um, but this game doesn't seem to have like the emphasis on explosives or just heavy armor tanks and stuff rolling around, which is kind of cool. It makes the matches feel snappier. You die a lot faster. You kill a lot faster. And having a mobile conquest mode like that's kind of a, a cool change. I wonder what kind of legs it's got on it, like that game mode in particular. Uh, yeah. I, th- I think this game's going to have some legs on it, especially like... um. I like Conquest. I always have like Conquest. I think that's going to be like the old standby. But I, I kind of like the heist mode. I didn't think it was like extremely well balanced. There were some issues like with um, like when we were playing on that uh, that one game. I want to say it was like the second day the beta was out, and basically like, the criminals were all camping on top of the um, parking garage on one side of the bank and yeah. just sniping. Like he's got shit like that to where it's like I, I mean, sure you can counter snipe, but it, it the it kind of ground the match to a halt almost like it really slowed the flow down. Well, that, and they put the, um, at the end of that match, you have to basically carry, um, like money out to these two points with helicopters. And the one point is like fucking directly in front of the, uh, the criminal spawn. And the other point is directly in front of the fucking police spawn. So it's just like, you constantly have all these guys fucking spawning right there in front of a fucking police, 
you know, vehicle. But then you kind of have to think, it's like, why the fuck would the chopper just be like, you know, I'm going to go over there, not in front of the fucking the SWAT vans and pick up these goods. Yeah. They, then there was one. Okay. So it's like the the map is shaped like a, it's a diamond shape, maybe. Right. So it's like the criminals yeah. are on the north end, the cops are on the south end. Then on the left side, you've got the parking garage. Then on the right side, like at some point in time, the exfiltration point for the criminals moved to the right side of the diamond, the east side of the diamond. Um, towards the end of that match. So I don't know what kind of like... Um, what triggered the game to change that? Like I didn't play enough of of uh, the the heist mode to find out. Like that's just something to where it's like... Um, if you try to go for the cop spawn point and you fail, like you're there and they kill you and you drop the money and the cops capture it, if the helicopter then moves to the right point to make it easier on the, the criminals and make it kind of like an in-between. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't so, know. I feel like they should have just put the fucking spawn over there to begin with. Instead of just having... So, like, the, the criminals are basically coming up against a fucking wave of spawning enemies. Which doesn't make too much great sense. I mean, it gives it kind of the sense of, um, like, in uh, Halo, where you have that assault map where you have to drop the bomb into the enemy base. But you have the enemy spawning, you know, inside and outside yeah, the base. yeah. But that there, like, when you get there, you stop spawning inside the base, and you spawn, like, way outside the base, and you kind of have to run back in. Kind of like you're assaulting to recapture your own base. In that, it was just, like, the fucking... The police force was just spawning right on top of their fucking spawn. I mean, their their capture point. So it's just, like, what the fuck's the point if you're not going to spawn us a little, a little ways away to give the criminals a chance to like clear that area out and spawn. And it just becomes like, how fast can I spawn to shoot the guy who grabs the bag to move it two inches? Yeah. And th- I mean, like, luckily I think they had like some, there was some depth to the map to where it was like, you know, you could go through the subway tunnels underneath. I don't know if you could like puncture through from like the bank down into the basement or if there was like a route down. That'd be but, pretty cool. Yeah. So it's like, I mean, I went down there as a cop. I didn't encounter any resistance, but it seemed like they let, that was directly underneath the cop side capture point. So I wonder if that's like another venue. I didn't really see it used, so it may just be, you know, it was beta. So people probably didn't know the map particularly well. I sure didn't. But I, I liked heist mode more than I thought I would. Like it's kind of a fun take um, on, uh, I guess, the Rush format, really. Yeah, it's basically just a redone version of Rush. I mean, it would be cool to see, um, like, if you have certain, like, at the beginning, the, the uh, criminals could infiltrate the bank in different ways. So one way you could take the sewer system, but it'd be, you know, there would be a certain challenge with that. Like, maybe you like drilling through or ex- blowing up through the floor or something like that. Or you could just rush through the front and then break through the uh, the safe with explosives that way. Well, I know that there are two, right? You could, you can capture the front point of the safe and then wheel it open and then go in and then you can either run back through or you can blow out a wall or alternatively if your team goes to the roof you can plant explosives on the roof that drop you down inside of the safe oh okay. so there's two at least i don't know if there's a third um i also noticed i got killed by the hacker a few times so they they have a commander mode in this it's the hacker i'm, I'm it's probably the hacker for the police as well but it seems like you know you can um I guess you can move from security camera to security camera and open up like um, you can explode pressure valves or something. I'm not I'm not 100 percent like I went into a room in front of the, the safe to where uh, suddenly I was just on fucking fire. And <laughs> when I got killed, it was like you were killed by the hacker. So I'm assuming that he can detonate something, um, which I thought was pretty cool, like being able to jump from yeah. security camera to security camera, kind of like uh, tagging the enemies so that your team can watch them and, and, and like fucking with them in little ways it's pretty it's pretty neat like i haven't played that mode yet to where it's like i haven't played as the hacker but it seemed cool it's kind of it's a neat take on the commander mode That's so i decided to do it final verdict from the beta that we just played are you gonna pick this up for like for sure when it comes out yeah yeah i think i mean i'm a battlefield fan i've, I've liked all of them i, I like bad companies take this kind of this doesn't feel necessarily like Bad Company, but as a spinoff, kind of like how Bad Company was, I'm, I appreciate it. It does have an expansion packy vibe, but um, I had fun with it, man. If it has enough map variety, then 60 bucks, sure, I'll, I'll pay that. Plus, I mean, hopefully the campaign's semi-decent. I don't know. I didn't hate the Battlefield 4 campaign. I thought it was uh, short, but it was all right. 
I have so. yet to play it. It's very short. I thought it was alright. Nah. Nah. Thanks. You're not missing anything by not playing it. Okay. <laughs> it's got some it's got some pretty graphics. Gra- graphics all over the place. Your mind explodes. You gotta take out the graphics before the graphics take you out. Yeah. I mean that's Battlefield 4 is a pretty good looking game. Mm-hmm. Uh Hardline, I didn't it didn't like wow me like Battlefield 4 did. I know it's using the same tech, but it just didn't seem like um it's as technically impressive as uh, four, especially like uh, the levolution stuff, like bringing the crane down is kind of that's all right. It looks big and kind of impressive, but uh, like the the dust bowl map was that what it was called? Yeah, the one that we played Conquest. Yep. And the sandstorm rolls in. Like the sand, I, it's know. like eh, yeah, like yeah. And, it, and the, I, if the sandstorm like came in maybe like more than once a match. Maybe it would make a little more sense. Like it's a constant, like coming in the thing that comes in and out every once in a while. But you only get it really towards the end of the match for like a little bit. And it kind of looks like Gulf really... of Oman. Yeah, but, but I felt it... like it was more impressive in Gulf of Oman. Like I want to say maybe I'm just making this up, but you kind of see the sandstorm like rolling in from the distance on the Gulf of Oman map in Battlefield Four, and it looks intimidating as it's getting closer and closer to land. Well, it's also it's also blowing in like water and the plants are moving and shit like that yeah oh, wait a minute no yeah yeah i'm thinking the right man it is everything like reacts in freaking four or i mean god the fucking hurricane and uh what is it uh operation is it parasol parasol yeah, storm i was i was actually thinking of parasol st- storm so that's that's why i included fucking water and plants but yeah like everything's rushing it's moving there's a lot of movement and it makes the scene look really dynamic I think a lot of the levels in Hardline just look really flat and basic. A lot of just yeah. hard hard edges and buildings and shit like that. And a lot of the environment isn't breakable. Like, a lot of things are very set in stone. You can't, oh, like, yeah. tear down. You're right. I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah, it does have, like, way less evolution. I, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. Like, uh, you know, you can still tear through fences and ship and vehicles. But it keeps the level design kind of more... Intact it's, over a shorter match. Yeah, it's a lot more rigid, and it doesn't feel as dynamic or fluid as like you know, Battlefield Four does. Even though eventually in Battlefield Four, at the end of the match, your uh, point is just a bunch of like buildings that have collapsed. Yeah, a point's just craters. Yep, <laughs> it's like, oh, where are we gonna hide? I'll just hide in this hole for a bit while I capture the flag <laughs> for for a little while. Well, what do you think? I mean, do you think that's uh, personally? I didn't. I noticed it. Like, I noticed that it was lacking that kind of destruction. But it didn't, like, bother me. You know, I kind of I kind of did appreciate that my, that my cover wasn't destroyed and that I could, uh, you know, have, like, a prolonged firefight from inside of a house. Yeah, like, I, I didn't really... I noticed it, but I didn't think way too much of it. Like, I didn't feel like it was a problem. It just... I feel like that whole evolution destruction thing is more of a dice signature... But it's not really Dice is working on a ton of this game. It's more uh, the the Dead Space guys. I can't remember the name of right now, and I feel really shitty. Uh, about visceral? It. Is it Visceral? Yeah, Visceral. It's mostly Visceral working on the game instead of Dice. Yeah. So it, it's more like, hey, you got the battlefield in with my other with with generic shooter. What's going on here? I want to blow this up. Yeah, I liked it. I, it was kind of weird. I I did not like the. Um... Early beta from last year around E3 time. Uh, I, I didn't hate it, but I mean, I, I really was not passionate all about it. And this time, um, I kind of came away and having a good time. So I'm picking it up for 60. How about you? You grab it in March? Yeah, I might grab it in March. A little double back. Just to tee out my like my stacked thing is during last. Yeah, you that, just that, got that, a new fucking month. console. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So I have already spent way too much money on video games in the past like four days. So. Back on Wii U, you said you, you picked up uh, 3D World, and you're playing through that with your girlfriend. What do you think of it? I'm, I think it's charming. I think it's a lot of fun. The, the feeling I get from that playing that game, it's, it's definitely a fucking kid's game. Like, right off the bat, that's a fucking kid's game. But, you know, I feel like... Like, more so Wii... than other Mario's, or just yeah. Mario in general? Just, it feels like more of a kid's game 
than most Mar- like Mario games. You know, they're fucking they're for kids, but for adults. But I feel like this is more shot towards kids of anything, especially with the, the cat suits and stuff mm. like that. And yeah. that you don't get like a full moving world. You only get, you get basically a setup like different stages and stuff like that. And it's very homaging to fucking Super Mario Bros. 3, which I feel like Nintendo really needs to stop like being like, oh, yeah, that was the best thing we ever did. It was fucking Super Mario 3. Oh, yeah. I, I feel like they really need to just fucking they need to put try again with Mario and be dynamic with it and just do fucking something different like with Galaxy. Yeah, I, you know, for me personally, I guess maybe it's from when I entered. Like, I played for my for my fifth birthday. I was given an NES and a Sega Genesis, and with the NES, I had like Mario one and three. So I played the shit out of that. So it's like, you know, as, as a kid, I had those, and then a couple years later, sixty four came out, and I picked that up year one. So the first Mario game that I um I was into those Mario games, but I was at the right age at the right time to really get into Mario sixty four, and I kind of like the uh. Good platforming, but a strong sense of exploration that you got from 64. It established a really good sense of place. Like, you were in the levels for a long time. You'd return to them and do... um, You'd fuck around with, like, the environment. Like, um, uh, what is it? Wet Dry World or whatever in 64, where it's like you're lowering and raising the water levels, that sort of thing. Or uh, Tiny Huge World or whatever the fuck. You know what I mean? Like you, 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 you were in a level for a long time, doing a mixture of, of uh, activities. And this one, it seems very straightforward. I mean, you're collecting like three of those green stars or whatever, mm-hmm. and like the stamps and stuff. But it, they're real short, kind of like a Mar, like you said, like Mario three level, to where it's like three had short little like stages a lot of time, and they were real concise and um, real like bite sized. In 3D World, it's just a huge series of those. I kind of liked what they were doing with 64, Sunshine, Lesso, and and Galaxy more than I like what they're doing with 3D World. It does kick up difficulty, though, like towards the end of the game. Okay, because I'm in World 3 right now. Like, we blasted through World 1 and 2. And then we got the 3, and we called it a night. We're going to pick it back up probably later tonight. It's our Valentine's thing. We're being super nerdy this year. Oh, so cute. I know, right? Can you get uh, drunk and play Mario? Yeah. That sounds fucking awesome. I, I might do some Mario Kart with that, like an intoxicated. That's about all I can manage. I'm well, heavily intoxicated. And that's also another game that my girlfriend would play is Mario Kart 8. But with 3D World, like, did you play 3D Land on the 3DS? No, I didn't play 3D Land. My 3DS, well, my 2DS, because I have a 2DS, but I'm, I'm planning on maybe picking up the new 3DS XL. Uh, I, I lent it off to a friend, like, the week I got it. Because he wanted to play the new Pokemon game. Like, well, I don't have any fucking money or games to play on this, so here you go. So I haven't really, I still haven't spent any time with the 3DS library at all. Even I really want to play Monster Hunter 4. Really want to play that. <laughs> yeah. Um, with uh, 3D Land and 3D World, I think they both kick up at the end of the game. Like, when you finish, like, the, the final balancer stage, it opens up, like, Secret Worlds after that. And that's when the um, that's when the game really starts to get fun for somebody that's played some Mario game. Okay, it, it picks up a little bit. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I I just feel like all this is just retreaded space again. Like when they were doing like the new Super Mario Brothers uh, games, where it was two D the two D stuff all over again. And some of them were even redone levels from the previous games. I felt like it was a really big step back, and I still don't think world is a true sequel to galaxy like i think it's still it's more like a 2.5d game instead of a full 3d game if that makes sense yeah yeah it does definitely so i'll i'm still waiting for my next big super mario Mario, you know 3d game it'll happen eventually i'm not sure if it's going to happen with the wii u like I, i feel like they might launch the next system with uh with a full 3D classic, well, it's not classic is the word, like Super Mario 64 styled exploration Mario, or at least like um larger scale like uh Galaxy feels like larger budget or something than than 3D World does. Yeah, it feels like grander in many ways and and 
Uh, it's definitely lacking that. And I feel like the the next Mario game will probably be more in that style. I think it's cool that they went in, like, 3D Land played really well, and I think 3D World plays really well. It just doesn't have... Um, it just doesn't feel quite like a mainline Mario. It kind of feels like a spinoff somehow. Yeah, that's what it feels like to me, too. But, well, if we don't get a Mario game like that for a while, I mean, we still have Star Fox looking, looking ahead, which hopefully we'll hear more in the next couple of like months about that. I'm really actually we're pretty psyched about that. Mm-hmm. And we have the new Legend of Zelda game that's coming out, which things are starting to sound pretty interesting because people are like, oh, you're probably not going to play as Link. That's not Link right there. I'm like, well, yeah, he's not wearing a green tunic and nothing like that, but you'll probably end up fucking getting it. Yeah. Man. Oh, yeah. So is that video games? I think that's video games. I mean, yeah, I think we're pretty good on video games this week. So what's kind of next? Like I, I've gotten back into Final Fantasy XIV, but I don't really have much to like share with that. I think the new patch is coming out probably by the time that we record the next one. So yeah. I can you probably talk about that then. That. Yeah, I talk about. I'm glad you joined. I really this, am. This, I went and I, I, I was really confused on where the fuck I was in that game because it was middle of the like the main campaign. I was like level ten. No, mm. yeah, level ten or something like that. No, fifteen. And I was like, what the fuck am I doing? But then I got a chocobo and everything was way better. Yeah, that definitely helps, being able to scoot around a bit faster. Plus, I mean, like, as you go to point-to-point, like, being able to teleport through Ethernet is is nice. Like, you don't spend a lot of time uh, traveling in that game. And, the, the, like, like, the regions, as they are with release, are um, pretty small. I think that's going to change with the expansion that comes out in the next few months. Um, yeah. But, I mean, that's a discussion for another time, and I have very little information on that, so fuck it. Yeah, we'll we'll have a special Final Fantasy fourteen episode maybe down the road where we just we'll specifically just talk about that when the new patch comes out. Oh, I'm so excited. Well hey. Alright man, it's been cool. It's been real. It's been real. We'll see y'all latest. Adios.